One of the brands of aftermarket ECU that we've seen move from strength to strength over the last few years is MS3 Pro. Uh, in the last 12 months, MS3 Pro have had a release of a brand new product in their Ultimate and their Evo series of ECUs. And we've got Ben here from MS3 Pro to fill us in a little bit on exactly what's happened with those products and what the differences are. So obviously MS3 Pro has been around for a, a fair while there, Ben. Uh, what was the drive to move to the new Ultimate and Evo platform? It was actually based on customer feedback. They loved the MS3 Pro Gen 1 ECU that we had. and We discontinued about a year ago and replaced it with the newer Evo model. The feature that most of them asked for was more additional analog inputs. So we found a way to make a new ECU, the same family, backwards compatible if they had a Gen 1 ECU, uses the same plug, same pinout, but adds additional analog inputs. The Gen 1 ECU had uh, three spare analog inputs. The new Evo ECU, which uh, plugs right in, has seven spare analog inputs. And uh, then we took it one step a little, little bit further, and we also released the Ultimate ECU. The Ultimate ECU has eight spare analog inputs and several additional PWM, PWM outputs and digital uh, IOs and a couple other things to make installation go smoother and more easy, more easy for the end user. So this is really to keep track with, obviously, as uh, the engines have become more complex, our cars have become more complex, uh, users want to add more sensors and right. control more functionality. Right, they want to add more sensors, they want to do more with data, and they want to do more to make sure that the engines are safe run to run, and uh, they need to add more sensors for that. They want to look at coolant pressure, and uh, they want to look at oil temperature and oil pressure, and and uh, uh, sensors on the suspension. They just needed more inputs. So we found a way to give them those additional inputs without really changing the cost uh, of the ECU. Now, in terms of getting even more inputs into the ECU, the Ultima and the Evo both use CAN as right. well, controller area network, a, a way of uh, communicating with a, a vast array of different products that are using a standardised communications mm -hmm. protocol. Uh, so can you tell us what is, uh, what is available, what we can do with that CAN bus on the MS3 Pro? There's a lot that we can do with the CAN bus. One of, the, uh, one of the things that we can do is we have a simple little box, it's just over $300, and it's also, uh, it's also weather tight, water, water tight, like the MS3 Pro is, and it adds CAN I.O. expansion. If you did run out of I.O. capabilities on the ECU, it's okay. We have a very low cost box that will add additional uh, I.O. capabilities to the box. You can also send CAN out to various display devices. So if you had a, a race pack or a race technology or an AIM or pretty much any mani major manufacturer dashboard, we can send the CAN information to that dashboard so it can display or, uh, or send it over to your data logger. The, uh, and the CAN uh, protocols are, are published. So if you have a third party device that you would like to use with our CAN bus, uh, our our uh, information is available, or I can give you a. We have a DBC file you can download from our website, and you can you can make the integration go pretty smoothly. Now I know the CAN system, CAN communications, is very very powerful, but I also know that a lot of users are maybe a little bit scared mm -hmm. uh, of the complexity of that. So let's talk about a, a basic installation yeah. where a user has an MS3 Pro Ultimate, for example, and they just have that race pack dash, mm -hmm. race pack dash that you've already talked about. Uh, so tell us how easy it is for the user to get the data from the MS3 Pro displayed on their race pack dash. Yeah, you're right. CAN can be very very scary. But we actually worked with Racepack to make that part very, very easy. We have what we call a simple broadcast mode, simple dash broadcast mode. All you have to do on my ECU is turn the mode on. And if you do that, the dash, my, my ECU will broadcast common parameters to the dash because you want to see things like your manifold pressure, you want to see your engine speed, your coolant temperature, boost, normal things. It all goes to the dashboard. All you have to do is turn it on and Racepack accepts that all you do is turn it on on their side and, and not just race pack but also aim and race technology and, and any other major manufacturer. So for that simple mode really it, it is as easy as just enabling the CAN communication. If the user is a little bit more advanced and wants maybe some other parameters mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily contained there and right. they're comfortable with programming a custom receive template in their own dash or module, right. uh, what's available there? Right, so the simple mode 
has 20 parameters. The ECU is actually capable of broadcasting around 400 parameters. They can be individually enabled uh, if desired, as long as the user is comfortable in doing the configuration on the display side themselves. Now, in terms of the tuning inputs, one of the ones we obviously need to see is a wideband air fuel ratio. Now, uh, the MSC Pro doesn't have onboard air fuel ratio or wideband control, uh, so how can we get wideband information into the MSC Pro? There's a few different ways. It will accept an analog output from any standard wideband controller up to one wideband per cylinder, um, or you can bring in um, and Innovate Wideband through their Innovate Serial. We have a, a separate box that brings it in. It, it translates serial to CAN bus. So you have uh, no, no loss in the integrity uh, of the air fuel data. Uh, we also accept CAN from AEM Widebands right now as well. I just want to touch back on something you've just mentioned there because it, it's something that I see a lot where users are uh, adding in an analog voltage wideband controller and these can work exceptionally well, don't get me wrong, but you do need to be very careful with the wiring of those analog voltage based wideband controllers because it is very easy to end up with a ground offset which affects the voltage that the ECU is seeing and hence the accuracy of the data. So uh, what you're talking about there is uh, with the Innovate brand they can communicate the air fuel ratio of lambda data via serial right. to an analog, essentially an analog to CAN adapter, then that information is sent via CAN to the MS3 Pro. Right. So that retains that integrity. You know that if you see uh, an air fuel ratio of 12.0 to 1, that is exactly what the wideband sending is, correct? That's right. It will bring in that data to the CAN bus. It keeps the data, it keeps the data very clean. You don't have to worry about any uh, ground offsets. The other benefit is the O2 input, the analog input that's on the ECU, can then be reassigned if you wanted to use a temperature or pressure sensor there in its place. Now, seeing as we're talking about air fuel ratio there, another thing that uh, I think is relatively unique with the MS3 Pro is uh, obviously most ECUs now can provide some form of closed loop air fuel ratio control. You made those small changes uh, just in case the current atmospheric conditions have affected the air fuel ratio the engine's running at. Mm -hmm. The MS3 Pro actually has the ability uh, to provide individual cylinder air fuel ratio control if you have those individual right. cylinder lambda, correct? Right, it will do closed loop on a per cylinder basis. You can assign uh, in the setup software uh, which wideband is on which cylinder and the ECU will use the, uh, the lookup table for your, your air fuel ratio lookup table and it'll compare that cylinder to the table and make an individual correction in real time. And it's one of the features that have helped us be very successful in a lot of forms of racing and at competitions like Engine Masters competition where you have to be very tight in your, in your AFRs. Yeah, certainly, as the power levels or the specific power level of the engine increases as well, uh, getting that individual cylinder air fuel ratio control accurate becomes uh, just that much more important. Uh, in terms of another aspect that we like to monitor when we are tuning as well, uh, in terms of the ignition tuning, obviously uh, if you're running on a low octane fuel and the engine is prone to detonation, it can easily damage the engine. So uh, the MST Pro also includes onboard knock control. Can you tell us how that works? That's right. It has a two channel DS. DSP based uh, knock input. You can set that up um, if you have proper engine position information coming in so you can run sequential fuel. Then you have the information required to also look at knock per cylinder. So you set up a, a bandpass uh, filter so the ECU will just look for the, the sound. It'll detect the sound of knock and can assign it to an individual cylinder and can then retard the timing on that individual cylinder as needed and you can program in the set in the setup how quickly to ramp that timing back in uh, you can set it up to not ramp timing back in at all and be very very safe or you can set it up to if, if you need to be aggressive uh, to bring the timing in back over time as long as no additional knock counts were detected now, in terms of that as well, I'll just go back a little bit. You mentioned the term DSP, so uh, for those of our viewers who aren't aware, it stands for Digital Signal Processing, and you've mentioned that band pass there. Right. So what we tend to find is that uh, for a given bore diameter, the frequency that knock occurs at uh, tends to be quite specific. Right. So the Digital Signal Processor allows you to focus on a specific frequency, and that really just improves that signal-to-noise ratio. It allows the ECU to kind of ignore a lot of that mechanical background noise right. and just really finely focus 
focus in on that frequency where we know that knock will occur. Now, uh, moving on, I think uh, one of the areas that we've seen a lot of success with the MS3 Pro brand is in drag racing, and particularly the no prep drag racing. Uh, one of the features there that I know a lot of users are uh, relying on is the, the traction control. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, the traction control is the secret sauce to being not just fast, but to be consistently fast. And it has very, very good power management functionality in there. And uh, it'll allow you to ramp in your timing over time uh, after the launch event, ramp in your boost, your power adder over time after the launch event, and actually scale power back if you, if you get a little happy. And it does it a couple of different ways. Um, if, you're, if your sanctioning body doesn't allow you to run speed sensors or, or doesn't allow you to run two speed sensors, uh, you, you can look at RPM over time. Uh, if you can run one speed sensor, you can look at your driven wheel speed over time. Um, if you are lucky enough to be allowed to run at least two wheel speed sensors, then you can look at a non-driven wheel versus a driven wheel and get real traction control based on percent slip. I think uh, most people can probably understand if we are allowed to run two speed sensors, uh, you can monitor wheel spin relatively easily. Uh, but it's more subtle when you have to monitor something like a driven wheel speed. So uh, in that instance, what you're really doing is uh, essentially profiling the ideal run right. uh, in terms of RPM versus time, and then limiting the engine power if uh, you exceed that. Right, that's, that's exactly correct. We can look at uh, RPM over time. You set up, we call it perfect pass. So you, you dial in what would be your perfect pass, and if you are going faster than perfect, then obviously it must be, it must be wheel slip. Now, if that wheel slip does occur, if the ECU decides, hey, we're, we're into wheel spin here, uh, what, what options are there available to reduce engine torque sure. and uh, get back into traction? The ECU has a variety of things it can do. Uh, I usually start very gentle with adding a little fuel just to soften power. It can retard timing. It can actually cut timing if it has to. Um, or timing is a very quick reaction. It can, it, can, it can be ramped out and it can be ramped in quickly. But if you're really out of shape, then we can start actually looking at pulling back your nitrous or pulling back your, your boost if, you to, if it's a turbo car. So it sounds like really there's a huge amount of flexibility up to uh, the individual tuner and exactly how much wheel spin I guess you've got. In other words, right. how much torque do we need to get out of the engine in order to retain traction? Absolutely. And, and it can do it quickly with the fuel or, or ignition modifiers or drastically by pulling boost or pulling, pulling the nitrous back. Look, Ben, it's been really interesting getting some insight into those products, the Ultimate and the Evo. Uh, if our viewers want to find out more about those products and MS3 Pro in general, how can they touch base with you? Yeah, please go to our website, www.ms3pro.com, and see our information there. That's great. Thanks for your time, Ben. Thank you. It was great, great of you to come by. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions, which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.